All right, welcome everyone. We are in the Monday morning breakthroughs event, and I am about to introduce our guest speaker for today, Melissa Henry. She is the founder of Personal Brandography. Helps she helps women coaches and consultants strategically clarify and showcase their personal brands, making their marketing way more effective for bigger impact and massive business growth. Her clients gain clarity, confidence, and connection through brand strategy, custom photography, and done-for-you viral content creation. You guys are going to be able to find Melissa at melissademple.com. We're going to have everything down in the show notes for you for connecting with her. Melissa, I've worked with you in different capacities for a few years now. And I'm so grateful to have met you at that Virginia business conference that was pre COVID y'all. It was was, so much fun. It was literally right before COVID. (laughs) Um, And what I know for sure is that you are passionate about helping us attract our perfect ideal clients. My brand photography is my favorite of all time in my entire business. So I first will thank you for that because when you have pictures you love, you share them you all y'all so like if you have pictures you don't love guess what you're not doing you're not sharing them right Mm -hmm. um so my brand photography is is my favorite of all time but you take this to a whole new level lately especially with how you incorporate the ai stuff so melissa you have 20 minutes to give us a breakthrough about this go for it i gotta i gotta set my timer (laughs) don't i here we go all right all right you guys thank you so much laura that's an awesome intro best one i've heard in a long 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 time um i want to quickly ask and and you guys can put this in the chat what do you wish your brand would do for you what's like the one thing that if you had this amazing strong i'm going to call it legacy brand what do you what does that look like for you so please put that in the chat i'll continue because i know i only have a little bit of, of time here today i'm actually talk to you guys about buyer's research. And when I say buyer's research, uh, I'm curious too, and you can put this in the chat or shout it out. Do, do you guys, or raise your hand, do you even know what that means? Everybody know? No, I'm getting some shaking. Oh, somebody's awesome. We've got some raised hands here and there. Um, so, so the deal with buyer's research is that it helps you gain an understanding, a deep understanding of your target audience's preferences, needs, motivations, behaviors, all of the good stuff. And I think up until this point, um, either it was large companies that were able to gain these massive insights into what their buyers really want, or if you were a solopreneur or you are a solopreneur, you'd spend a whole lot of time interviewing clients, uh, you know, going out and trying to find market research reports, um, you know, spending time on surveys, all of the things, and it would take a super long time for you to get that that uh, in depth knowledge, right? But now with AI, we get to do that in rapid time. So, uh, and when you when it comes to what your buyer's research is, what do we, what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about the deep level what we call psychographics about the person that you most want to serve. Laura mentioned to niche down. Yes, she's niching down when it comes to what we call demographics. So the factual information about that person, that's important. That's step one, basically. Step two then is when you know you are focused on one specific kind of person, then you get to go super deep into exactly what's going on in their world. Super exciting, at least it is to me. Um, And what do you you wanna know? we've been able to uncover things like the common obstacles that they have to success. Have you thought about that? Like, what are your clients having, like what are the things that are standing in their way to get where they need to go? Um, We obviously talk about their deepest desires. What kind of common beliefs do they have? And of those beliefs, which ones are positive and which ones are negative? You kind of want to know what they're thinking and believing and feeling. What are their insecurities? What are the knowledge gaps? Meaning, what do they have to know to get from point A to point B? You are the solution to that knowledge gap. Um, What objections do they have 
a lot of these objections that people have when they get when you get on calls with them, they're hidden. You don't even know they're there. So this research gets you to that point where now you know, and imagine that, like imagine knowing before you even get on a sales call, the potential objections someone has and what their hidden objections are, like what they're not even telling you. It's, it's powerful stuff. Um, so there's, uh, there's more and more, like tons more you can find out through this rapid research. But I'm gonna pause for a second and say, Laura talked about authentic abundance earlier. And this is what, because I think a lot of people think, oh, well, I can't niche down because there's not gonna be enough. This is the scarcity idea. But when you see how powerful this research is, then you get to niche down with confidence because you actually know, oh my God, it, the, the whole world opens up to you when you see this because you know now you can serve all of those people at a much higher level because you know that the solution you have will help them. And if time permits at the end of this, I'm gonna share my screen and show you because I think showing's better than just talking about it. Not only what we were unable to uncover for Laura in record time using an AI-based system, but we're also gonna talk about how she is implementing what we uncovered. It's pretty exciting. So um, I talked about AI. I'm not talking about ChatGPT, by the way. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what can you do with all this research that you're uncovering about your clients? Um, well, how about creating social media posts that actually get engagement? Or how about this? Social media posts that actually get people wanting to get on a call with you or wanting to get in your world or asking for more information. I don't know about you, but to me, that's the holy grail of social media, if you can get that to work. Um, lead magnets that actually convert into clients. Uh, adding additional value to whatever offer you have, because if you uncover all of this stuff that these people really want, well, what if you could actually create an offer that's like so much better for them and really actually gets down into the core of what they really wanna solve? That's worth so much more to someone. You can increase your prices uh, because you're giving more value, it's obvious. Uh, you can refine your sales pages to actually make them speak like, like the person's on the sales page, they're going, oh my God, this is me. This is exactly what I'm going through. There's also another one, which is I found was an, a kind of an, a hidden benefit. What if you could uncover gaps in the marketplace that nobody's really serving very well? So niching down and using the power of AI to get all of those data points for yourself and then implementing what you find, it's, it's, it's game changing for you and for your business. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how I do research for my clients and with using this approach. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about ChatGPT after that. So uh, the approach, basically you wanna start with, what's the ultimate goal that I have for my research? So I know some of you talked earlier about what you're doing, you're doing launches and, and things like that. You've got books that are coming up, all of that, but what do you wanna do first? Do you want to bring them into a newsletter list so that you can nurture them and maybe they become clients? Do you have a waiting list you wanna add people to? Maybe you have a launch coming up, but it's like a few months away and you just want people in there that are interested. Uh, or maybe you currently have a program running and you wanna fill it. So understand your ultimate goal before you start doing the research. Okay, um, so secondly, you wanna understand the major problem you typically solve for your clients something that your offer right now currently does. For example, um, this actually came directly from Laura's research. We were talking about the fact that her audience feels overwhelmed by the writing process and sometimes doubt their ability to create a successful book. That's a problem for people that she can solve. The next thing you wanna do is, and this is really for the purpose of getting the the right problem. So you wanna go out and you wanna find out, are people really searching for this problem? You can go to just general uh, search engines, like you can go to YouTube, answer the public, uh, um, Amazon, even looking at like other books that people have written about the topic. And when you go there, make sure that there's enough people watching those things or reading those, those books. Um, you don't wanna do like solve a, or you wanna be putting out a problem out there that maybe most people really just don't search for. It might be a problem you solve, but it might not be something your audience really wants to know about. 
So the next step here would be micro niche like we talked about earlier. So I'm gonna do a quick thing because the question was asked by Sandra about niching. So the deal with niching, start first demographically and then layer it like Laura did. You know, she's she helps holistic health and wellness practitioners, right? But keep like uh, chip away at that. Keep going. How how much how deep can you go? I would even say try this for one month. Go as deep as you possibly can to the point where it makes you feel super uncomfortable, and then go with it, and then see what happens. Because I guarantee you, if you start talking to those people, you're not just going to attract those people. You're going to attract people that are on the next layer and the next layer and the next layer because you're getting really specific about your language. Okay, so next thing we wanna do as well um, is you wanna understand what's, what's the method by which you solve the problem. So what is your unique way of doing things? You probably have a program. What's the name of the program? Uh, how does the program work? What's, what's the, the sort of um, methodology by which you're gonna solve that problem you just came up with? Um, so those are the data points I like to gather before I do this research. I need to understand those things first before we get further. Then I, I use this, uh, an AI-based system and I run those, those uh, data points into it to pull out those characteristics I talked about earlier. And that's what I was gonna sh I'm going to show you later, what we uncovered there. Um, so you might be asking me, why do I care about using a, this different system other than ChatGPT? Here's the thing. I have tried to use ChatGPT, and it's 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 helpful. It's definitely helpful. If you have nothing else, you definitely should be starting to use it if you're not doing it already. In fact, quick show of hands, anybody really using ChatGPT right now? We got a couple people, I think. Yeah, great. So um, here's where it goes wrong for most people. It doesn't. The, the program is not a system. They basically make it so that it's 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 a you know data in and outputs and there's no structure to it so it makes it really hard for generally people to use it really well unless you really get into how to prompting how to do the prompting right so you spend a lot of time and i've done this myself going down a rabbit hole of like oh my god this is taking me forever to get the information i want so it's about learning how to use chat gpt really so time's a big factor it can take hours or days to perform the kind of research i'm about to show you unless you're highly skilled at prompting. And even then, you know, and I think I'm fairly good at it at this point, it still takes me a long time. I typically go down that rabbit hole. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather just have it done quickly and then get into my zone of genius, which is helping my clients. So, um, so let's do this. Let me quickly look at what we said here, uh, what people really want to bring in more curiosity from potential new clients. Um, organic traffic to the website, signups in my sleep for sure filling group programs, finding wellness professionals who are excited about taking their impact to higher levels, um, for the right and perfect women to consistently find me and show up for my gatherings. So good. Um, bring in more offline conversations with qualified leads. Amazing. Guys, this is exactly what this will do for you. So let's do this quickly. Um, I know I don't have a ton of time, so I'm gonna just share my screen, if you'll allow me to, Laura. Build the email list. Yeah, Laura, for sure. All right, here we go. Uh, buyers research, writers retreat is what Laura is working on right now. So let's see. So if you're seeing what I'm showing you, um, this is this part up here at the top was the optimized data I talked about earlier. And here's what we uncovered. There's all of these obstacles, potential obstacles that Laura's uh, Laura's niche is is struggling with right now and we were unable where we were able to pull this research by the way in a matter of minutes i think it probably took me about 20 minutes or so to pull the full group of data here what else were we able to uncover um more obstacles here we did a couple runs on some of these but what desire what deep down desire do they really want I'm going fast because I know I, I don't have a lot of time, but you can see common beliefs that they have. I'll just throw some out here. It's impossible to make a living as a writer, or um, I don't have the discipline to write consistently. Um, negative beliefs, 
Uh, this one's a good one. I'm too old to become a successful writer. How many times people might have said that to themselves? What insecurities may they have? Um, I don't even know where to start writing a book. Um, I'm not sure if my writing will resonate with anyone. And then there's common enemies. That's sort of like, um, what, do, what is this sort of a commonality amongst everyone in this group? You know, that, that might, they might be thinking this or they might be really actually having something that's, a, that's stepping in their way. What are the negative consequences if they don't solve the problem? Um, let's see. Uh, let the next one, oh, micro results really are, what are some quick wins you could probably give them through your program? And I think you remember when I was saying before, um, you can look, when you start looking at this research, you can say, well, what, what other wins can I show people? What can I build into my offer or my program that will help them get this, this result? Or, you know, maybe it's not even building in. Your program already does that, but you just haven't talked about it yet. This is a great place to look for that. Um, let's see, we're going to go down a little farther here. Uh, these were just ideas for lead magnets. Undesirable yet needed task. What are they doing right now that they think they have to do rather than, you know, using the solution that you can provide? Um, traditional paths, a bit similar there. Kind of what are they doing right now that maybe isn't giving them results or could be giving them results, but it's something that maybe it's harder for them to get the result or it takes more time and you can give it to them in less time. Then there is um, unexpected solutions. That's a bit similar here. Counterintuitive approaches. That would be, uh, you know, what might they do that actually will work, but they they just don't believe it or if they've never heard of it before and it sounds really weird. So those are interesting things to look at. And of course, then we go into the objections. Uh, common external objections, internal objections, uh, and then uh, hidden objections. So it's it's crazy how much information we can get from all of this. And then there's also statistics which um, are not very helpful sometimes when it comes to especially ChatGPT because AI is not super uh, accurate about a lot of this. So I, anytime you're looking at anything super factual oriented, I would I would be concerned about that right now with AI because it's not it's not perfect yet. So um, I'm going to stop share for a minute, and I would love to know like what's going what's going through your mind right now. What are you guys seeing? Is there any breakthrough yet? Did I did I help you out yet? <laughs> and you can come off mute if you'd like. So if any of you guys have a question, if you would please type it in the chat and we will answer it. I'm going to read it for you for this portion of yeah. what's going on. So please go ahead and do that. And if you if you guys don't have any questions, I for sure have a, a couple of comments about going through the process, which was- Yeah, let me talk a little bit about, while everybody is kind of putting things, if they have any questions in the chat. Um, so what we're doing for Laura, and the reason why we did this was because Laura's got her writer's re retreat next year in April. And that's, May, that's right. May. May, 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 sorry. <laughs> so, May. Um, and so what we we're trying to do here is to figure out how are we going to get more eyes on this? And she wanted to really know, like, what's the deep down issues that my writers will want and what are they going to get out of my retreat? So we spent a lot of time during the process, before and during and after the, re the research process, like digging into that and really understanding this from their perspective. The next step with her, we're creating a lead magnet that is specific to that audience. She's already put that out there into the world saying, hey guys, I'm thinking about creating this. Is this something that you want? And then she gets to test the, the, uh, the audience and figure out, is this really what they want? Next step after that is she can actually start talking to those people right now. She didn't have to wait till the lead magnet's out. She can actually get on calls with them, you know, get, bring them into her world in some way through the DMs, et cetera, in social media. With the lead magnet, we're building into the lead magnet the path, the buyer's journey of getting onto that call with you to get into your retreat. So it's all connected and it flows and it's a process. So that's kind of what the next steps are for Laura. And then after that, we're going to be building out some social media that uh, pertains specifically to the retreat and again, gets engagement from her audience and wanting to, to learn more. So 
So Melissa, um, um, let's do the speed dating version of the answers to these questions in a very um, brief way. How is this different from chat GPT in terms of what they provide? So uh, in this situation, as I said before, chat GPT can be used, but you will need to spend a long time trying to get it, you know, prompt it to get it to give you the feedback. And then there's no, none of the next steps are there. So it doesn't help you create anything else. And there's, and there's also no way of figuring out, well, I mean, not no way, but um, the interpretation of the data and how to use it, it's not there. That's the reason. So does this system have a name that you want to share? I mean, it's called mass content. Okay. Yes. That was but, Krista's question. Uh, I'm including it as part of how I work with people now because it's so powerful. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yes, Mary definitely takes yeah. you to the next level. You're going to feel uh, like your strategy has gotten a super boost for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and Ginny, I feel you. She's she's thinking yeah. of, that she doesn't quite know that ideal client. So Melissa, please, in our last like few seconds here, um, mm -hmm. tell everyone how they can work with you and, and what you want to share with them today. Absolutely. Um, so right now I do have a beta program that I'm working through and what we're doing there is this exact buyer's research specific to whatever it is, whatever goal you've got in mind. We're also adding, you know, something onto the end of that. It could be that you want a lead magnet where we're working on creating that uh, for Laura right now. Um, it could be that you want to just kind of put some social media out there that actually brings in some, some clients. That's something we can do. So I have a link for that. And if you are if you really, I only have like a few more spaces available. I think right now we've got four more spaces. Um, but what you can do is also get in a call with me through this link. So it's the second link that you see there in the chat. Um, and just get on a call and we can talk you know, further about where you are with things. So I can give you some advice or some guidance. All right. And anyone watching on live stream or YouTube, you're going to find everything that she's talking about down below. OK, um, so let me just add a couple of things about this. You, you, I think most of you who've worked with me before know that I'm really transparent about my process because I want to pay forward what works to you all. So what you're seeing out in some of my groups is is this process. I started this process by polling you all the other day. So now you know, now you know the secret. So go back to those authors groups and when you see, when you saw the poll, that is what we're up to. Kind of, kind of got to know, right? We want to know. And why did I choose to work with Melissa for the writer's retreat? Well, very honestly, this is, this is scary. It's a big deal for me. It's a big retreat. There's a lot of money involved. I want this to be successful. I want the right people to come into my world to be writing for our 2024 publications. So we're taking 48 authors to New York to retreat for four days, who will also be a part of one of two Amazon best-selling collaborative books. And this is a alien kind of retreat, different kind of animal. And I told Melissa, I'm like, whoa, we need to do this for the retreat. I need some help. This is a very specific thing. It's difficult to advertise and market because of what it is. It's not just a writer's retreat. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to share that with you guys so that you could understand like why do all this extra for this one offering? Well, that's why, okay? Um, so Melissa, um, we're going to continue to um, chat during the event here in the next few minutes, but just to wrap up this portion of things today, um, thank you. Actually, can I ask you one quick question, Laura? Yeah, go for it. What I, I saw initially the, the response you were getting, have you gone back to see how many people have responded now? No, I have not taken the next step of your instructions. <laughs> so, and, right. and, and we have some things to talk about, about we that, do. you know? Yeah. yeah. So yes, no answer is yeah. no. She's mm -hmm. going to call me out y'all on taking action on what I'm supposed <laughs> to do here. That's totally it is cool. about taking action too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for, for our recording today, um, what's the one last most important thing you want business owners to know about this? So I would say this, it's really important to slow down to speed up sometimes. You know, you don't, um, I think a lot of times we spend with our heads down doing, 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 
And often we don't take the, the time to just back up for a sec and let's see what we can really do in a more strategic way. And that's exactly what doing this buyer's research will do for you. Spend the time now, not just for the one-off events, like really get strategic about how you're gonna grow your business. And it, your business growth, it depends on your brand. It's not, the, it's not the marketing, it's not the sales. I mean, it is, but if you don't have the brand dialed in, those two things will fall flat for you. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you. Um, just a personal thank you uh, for being by my side during my business building. Um, it's been fun to be there for each other and um, grow together and do all these amazing things together. And um, I want you all who are listening to our recording to know that, you know, Brave Healer Productions is here to help you share your brave words with the world in a bigger way. We want you to break through to that next level of life and business. And we aim to bring experts like Melissa on to the show to help you do that. We want to give you the info. Um, there are no secrets. We're here to share everything with you. Okay, so drop it down into the show notes if you'd like to hook up with Melissa, share a discovery call with her, learn more about everything that she has going on. Um, and lastly today, you guys remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave.